Hello everybody, welcome to the second round game, my second round game in the Blood Bowl Super League um, between myself and Call Troop. Call Troop's won the toss and is receiving, so I'm kicking now so that I can concentrate very much on playing this game. I am going to get out of here and let Hargrim take over and do all the commentary and maybe somebody else if they join uh, it would really help them out because it's it's rough doing a solo cast I can tell you that I can tell you that um, right I'll put it red and blue and oh what the fuck is that uh, what's the thing for the things is it this yeah right okay so it's all set up now I've got a minute to go um, thank you very much Hargrim I shall uh, I shall get out of here and concentrate on the game cheers bye now how are we doing, chat? Dimmy, get in here. You've got time. So this is a very classic orc setup. Pretty much just denying as many blocks as possible. I would have liked to see the biggins on the line, but... You know, with this much guard from the humans... He's going to be able to fabricate the blocks anyways. So, no point in putting the biggins on the line and risking them getting injured. Blitzers protected. There's no good blitzes. Fairly solid standard setup from Jim here. Had to set up my auto clicker then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because this game is still very, very good, isn't it? So we'll see what uh, what Cold Troop sets up for. It's looking like he's just going to take the straightforward blocks instead of the diagonal blocks. Because he can't really maximize the amount of blocks he's going to get if he wants to block the troll as well. And not risk a turnover immediately, because it's an ogre. Also attempting to protect the sides a little bit, but it's not really that effective. So if Jim does get a blitz here, it's going to be very easy to pressure the sides depending on where the ball goes, unless it goes deep. Of course, Orcs not being known for being the fastest in the world. So what Call Troops should do is take some of the catchers and put them on the flanks, either directly behind the lineman or in a diagonal, so that he can try and maximize the amount of space he's controlling. Instant full catch, diced. So someone earned the stab skill. Wait. Wait. There was a guy on the si on the bench that got stabbed. That's got to be a bug. That's got to be a bug. Not dead. Uh, Steve, it's for the drive. And Mordred, it shouldn't work like that. It has to be on the pitch, I think. Hold on, let me just double check the rule. Uh, uh, that's the website I'm looking for. Prayer to Nuffle. I mean... Rules is written... It can affect the people on the sideline. However, it does say available to play this drive, so it shouldn't actually go to the people on the bench. I mean, they've got it, as with so many other things in, in Blood Bowl 3, they've just got the rules wrong. I don't understand this random base, however. Oh, we're just going for the 1D. Gets them both down. I'm not sure I like that 1D because you're immediately just giving a block back and then a blitz. Yeah, that's true, Mordred. They don't really play the bloody game, do they? Basically, what Call Troops should have done is just avoid taking the blitz this turn. 
because it's not going to give him anything taking the blitz other than getting his player based and potentially removed because the, the the risk reward for it is that he just gets his guard piece punched back it's got lower armor yeah it has block so it's easier to defend itself but that doesn't matter because Glorious. the biggin doesn't have block anyways. No, I won't give in. So it's pointless in basing Until up and trying I'm to go for the one D for so little potential I reward. Defend. I will defend. Hello, Christopher yeah, B, hello. and thanks for the raid. Welcome to the channel. And now Call Troop's in a bit of trouble because he's got five players locked and the side switch isn't going to be possible. Because what Jim's going to do is he's just going to clinch everything, keep his Frenzy Blitzer away. And now, Call Troop either has to make a bunch of dodges, or open up his turn with a 1D, and then figure out what to do from there. Which is... Um... What? Exactly. This is a very tough turn for Call Troop to try and manage already. And he's already put himself in this position from, you know, trying to base up and take a 1D. Yeah, he opens up the turn with a 1D. Cruel, it works sometimes, especially in this kind of matchup. It's supposed to work sometimes, especially if you outstrength your opponent. And he, Jim, first of all, guard blocks everything because he's got six guard and a frenzy countering to two guard because the ogre is double tagged so the ogre is useless keeping the frenzy piece as a sweeper he's basically got nothing he can do this turn other than try and like single screen and move to the other side which isn't going to work because he's got a sweeper which means he's going to get half of his team blocked or he needs to roll a million three pluses or just take one d's and get pals apparently You eat that. Okay, I guess you don't eat that. He's going to get more of his players blocked. This is the problem with seeking contact as humans against orcs. Oh look, another one in nine. <laughs> stunned, stunned the ogre as well. Yeah, exactly, Cruel. Yes, Steve, the, the ball is safer in this position. The problem is he's going to get half his team punched now. Like, he's got... He's given away five, six... Six blocks and a blitz. That's problematic if you're doing that on turn two. Because you're essentially locking your team into a scrum for the rest of the game. Which is not what you want to do. You want to try and not seek contact against the guard orcs. A one die on the ball, punter, but you don't r really want to take that. It's pointless in taking it when you can apply so much pressure. You could also take the two dice this way, which is better. One, two, three, four, five. It's, it's not even a go for it. It's not even a rush to make the block or the blitz. It's literally just two dice. And now he can completely lock both sides of the pitch, restricting Call Troop's movement. Yeah, you don't reroll that. So now Call Troop is in a whole heap of problems because he's got half his team locked on one side of the pitch 
His other team, his other half of the team, is locked on the other side of the pitch. He's got nowhere to run safely except for backwards. And running backwards is only going to get more of his team punched. The Mighty Blow is also going to get hit, which could be a great chip. Okay, never mind. Diced. Completely and utterly rolly cubed. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, Dwyer. Re rewarded with the correct rolly cubes. The ogre being stunned is also very problematic for Call Troop because it controls this. It was supposed to control the center, and now it's doing nothing. And essentially, what Jim can do is just leave alignment on the ogre for the rest of the game, which is a incredibly good trade for Jim. So, really nice turn from Jim, and Call Troop is in trouble. Let's see what he does. Opens with a 1D to try and free up a player so that he can 1D blitz his ball carrier clear. Try and shift over to the other side, maybe. Doing that will also allow his catcher to come out of the position as well, which means he should have some form of a screen. And get most of his team back into at least one spot. Oh, a skull here is really, really bad. Okay, that helps. And now that should just run over to the right side again. No, he's gonna take a... What? Gonna take another one die? Or make it two with a ball carrier? That seems... Interesting. Yeah, absolutely, Helemies. The uh, the angle was really bad, too. I mean, this is just another two-die on the ball. He's got to dodge with the catcher now. But there'll still be enough players to free up at least a blitzer or something to take two dice on the ball. Yeah, there's just... It's a two-die block into a two-die... Well, blockless block... Blockless block uh, with three dice. Then you've got a blitzer free to uh, to hit the ball for two dice, making it three dice is a bit of a commitment, um, especially with how much the team is currently based up. I don't think it's very prudent to be taking three dice because you want some sort of recovery as well. <laughs> exactly, Dwyer. Boil him, mash him, stick him in a stew. Someone sing the Tato song. T A Y T O. Thanks, Steve. Doing me a solid. Yeah, <laughs> J5. Classic gym dice. I mean, Helemy's call troop put himself in this position. He put himself in this position turn one with the random 1D blitz that he didn't need to make. He could have played it a little bit more passive, wait for the orcs to come out of position, and then he'd be fine. If he keeps side swapping, trying to avoid like getting his entire team based by better positioning, um he'd he'd be able to avoid most of this but that that 1d blitz turn one is just not it which is exactly why jim set up the way he did it's going to be a bad blitz regardless of what um call troop does i'm interested to see how he manages to scramble this back but i don't think it's looking very promising considering the ball is in a very hittable position And that last dodge that he made was just not good either. He needed that to just stay where it is. 
Yeah, now we get three dice on the ball with the Black Hawk. Big and sorry. What I would have liked to see Jim do here is actually try and free up that biggin to try and mark off that last catcher so that it needs to make a 1 in 9 dodge to do something. Ooh, that's a big casualty. It is just a badly hurt, so I do imagine we'll see. Yeah, Apo deployed. But a good scatter for the ball does mean you can now try and get uh, a biggin onto the ball so you'll have it in two tackle zones. Which also makes it nigh impossible for that catcher to try and get the ball. Or you can screen it off. Both things are a possibility and fairly decent options. Uh, because you don't really have recovery unless you're willing to throw a 3 plus dodge with the frenzy blitzer. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Which would also be a 2 plus rush to pick it up. So 3, 2, 3. Which is not very good. You'd rather just take the hit and then recover next turn. I'm very disappointed in the f in the first three turns from um, from Call Troop. He's he's a better player than this, so I suspect we'll see it up. We'll see him try and improve it over the next while. Yeah, this works. I would have preferred to just take the block and then recover next turn on the Line Orc. Because this catcher is going to try it. Like, what, what's he got left? He's got an uphill blitz on the line orc to try and, and clear the ball. Um, it's 25% to get him down, which is fairly decent, considering the position you're in. But it's also just two two pluses, right? Which means you can then follow up, dodge out, four plus pick up, potentially score. One, two, follow, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, rush, rush. Yeah. E, you let this slip. No. Now there's even more reason to go for the two die uphill try and score this turn. You will have to spunk your last reroll on it though. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Dim. Nice GFI, mate. Where'd you get it? Also, Dimmy, are you available? Because if not, hop into the uh, to commentary booth. Yeah, Lee, it was snakes. One reroll, one. Ah, oh, you're working, fair enough. Trolling Jimmy is also a very important work thing. Must admit. Bunch of extra three pluses. Considering he just traded two two pluses for two three pluses. This is not Yeah. Has to reroll. Yeah, gonna get the score here. It does give Jim five turns to counter score for one one and then gets a full drive. He's got one reroll left. Full men's. <laughs> Amazing gym dice. But yeah, this should be fine for Jim to try and squeeze out the 2 1. Five times is plenty of time for Orcs to score. Now, deep setup from the humans is quite interesting because it gives up a lot of early space but allows for a lot more responsiveness early and doesn't allow any good blitzes on turn on the first turn. So while it doesn't allow for a lot of proactivity, it does mean that you're not getting your team punched and it does mean you can be more responsive to what's going to happen. So it has its upsides and it has its downsides. Yeah, Helamis, the problem is he's he's setting up so deep 
that he's not going to be able to respond in case he gets a blitz. Which is a bit naff. Yeah, exactly, Helenes. It's exactly what he's going to do. He's just going to screen, try and cover for the 1-0 by a half-time. But knowing Jim, he's going to find a way through. <clears throat> there is going to be a way through. Because eventually, Jim is going to seek enough contact that Cold Troop has to roll some threes. And one of those threes are bound to fail. Except knowing Jim's dice, it's not going to work. Very deep setup on the thrower. I imagine we're going to try and get an early handoff. Or an early pass. To try and centralise the ball. Lands on the line. Changing weather. Okay. Decent enough square for the ball. Mr. Throws out of range, though, which is a bit sad. trivial stuff from Jim here. Just taking his LOS hits. <clears throat> Covering in case of bad dice. Smart. Gets the troll free as well. Which is going to be nice to take some early space. taken. Yeah, you have to let that go, unfortunately. I would have liked to see the black, the last big and move before you take the blitz to try and shore this a little more. The plus side is, the center is dominated by the orcs. Which means the side shift towards the right is going to be positive. Because he's prob Cold Troop is probably going to come to the left side. And try and defend. Or take a blitz on the right side. I mean the Orcs, the Orcs naturally want to go to the left. Because that's where the ball is. And the, the center is controlled. So a switch to the, to the left is easy. No he's not going to dive that ball. He's just going to take his safe blitz and KO the troll. Nope, just a stun. Yes, Christopher B, that is exactly what I'm saying. They are a fungus, and they do kind of work like a hive mind. Except they don't really. Now this catcher on the far right is going to prove to become a bit of a problem for Jim. Because he has to deal with it in some way. And the two ways of dealing with it is either blitzing it, 
or moving the frel away from it. Now, if you move away from it, you're going to be taking the left side, which is exactly where Culture wants you to go. This one-for-one -one trade on the right as well, with the lineman for the biggin, is also a valuable trade for Call Troop. He's definitely stepped up his uh, his play since the offense. Definitely picked it up. Because he's playing the defense a lot better. a really nice takedown. Unfortunately, Jim has blocked his own path. One, two, three, four, five. He he has to hit the mighty blow here. Like the mighty blow is already tagged. It's in the open. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Sadness. Jim is all in on the pickup Dwyer. He has to make this pickup. Which he does. I mean, it is 11% to fail, right? So it should succeed. But, you know, 1 in 9s do happen, as we have noticed already this game. And most of us already know very well about 1 in 9s. Cruel, you're Danish, right? Because if you're Danish, I'm pretty sure there are like far right leaning um, parties that really want to bang on men's. No, Steve, there is a clear hierarchy in, in orc culture. The bigger you are, the more influence you have. So. The biggins are obviously the most influential. Cold Troop is trying to decline as much space as possible for Jim here. But he's not really got a good blitz unless he wants to 1D with the catcher. Which uh, would be a bit interesting. Nope, he's taking the 2D with the lineman. Fails the rush. And that is a free punch on a thrower. The problem for Jim is he needs to start making forward progression this turn. So how do you gain forward progression? Two of your blitzers are pretty much locked against the ogre, which means you kind of want to dodge them or you can take an uphill. Again, two two pluses. It is leaving the left side completely open, uh, Steve, which is instinctively where Jim should go. Nice Kaz. I think that's just a lineman. Yeah, just a lineman. Exactly, Helamese. You punch and go left. The left side is completely open. Cold Troop can't re-maneuver re to try and block it off without rolling a whole heaping ton of 3 pluses. So, going left is the natural path. Biggin just stands. 
Frenzy Blitzer Blitzers. Hopes for the 55. Gets the 55. Pretty much, pretty much cruel. Uh, sorry, Helamis. No, yes, cruel. Sorry, I misread that. He needs to fail the first dodge, and then this is basically over. Like the humans have enough bench to just basically say, "Well, that casualty doesn't matter." The problem is for next half, how many are going to stick? He has a bunch of dice. He's essentially got four, three players that are out of the game: the catcher, the thrower, and then a lineman traded off for one blitzer so that leaves him with what seven pieces to work with against ten that's not good like anyone who can at least do basic arithmetic knows that that's not good odds the ogre is not really going to be able to do much other than just take a block is that a catcher? I think that's a catcher based on the troll. Oh, rolled a one. Goes for another one die. Instant full pow. <laughs> True, Dimmy. True. He was definitely wishing he was knobs right now. I really hate your imperial nobility with a burning passion. I oh, think knobs, knobs, knobs. Trash. trash. Knobs are OP, and man. Anyone that plays them is <laughs> trash. Right. And they have a feather fetish, and I hate them. <laughs> so this is going to be an interesting turn from Jim to see like how he handles this position. He does have a nice chain to try and break the screen that Cold Trooper set up. Um, to get two dice into one dice with the uh, with the frenzy blitzer on the guard blitzer. You can also just walk through the middle. I forgot about the yoga being boneheaded for a second. Yeah, taking the center is definitely the play with the yoga being bonehead. Um, it's just a matter of how you take the center, right? So I think the blitz has to be on that catcher. Well, no, not necessarily. It depends on the on the uh, the chain push block here. I think you open with the chain push block. And then see what happens with that. Yeah. So it's not a knockdown. Two, three, four, five. Twelve, eleven, ten, nine, eight, seven. So the thrower can get into range without needing to roll a single rush this turn. It does mean he needs to get to the square diagonally southwest from the catcher. Which is going to make, considering this wasn't the 55% POW, Jim's turn just got a lot trickier. I'm actually not sure of the solution to this turn either. Okay, but it wasn't... No, it was that. Really smart move from Jim, just... Very unfortunate that it's not a POW again. Which changes his blitz target now as well. Unless he tries to force himself down the side here? That's not going to work though. 4, 5, 6, rush, rush. I mean, we can get this downed blitzer into range anyways. 4, 5, 6. 
which means that's a scoring threat that needs uh, that needs dealing with. <laughs> exactly, J5. Just easily, just pass it to the Bob. Okay, finally get to pow. Yeah, pushing the frenzy up was another option. The problem with that line is that you're kind of you you kind of are relying on getting the pow on the two dice because you can't rely on getting it on the 1d and you kind of need the power on the 2d so that you can push through the center right now jim's not going through the center he can't anymore so he needs to somehow protect oh he's going for the tato t a y t o one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, rush, rush. He needs to make a single rush to be outside of... He actually needs to make two. So that the Blitzer can't just three, two, two. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, rush, rush. Two, three, four, five, six, rush. Rush. Yeah, and big and Blitz. Troll will move as well. Hopefully. I think you start off with the troll move. Troll's a good boy. Now you don't need the rush. And now you blitz with the big one. Hope for the pal. It's not a power, you just push southeast. Try and force the lineman around. Okay, it gets the power. Southeast. Tag up the yoga. One, two, three. Fucking auto pathing got me. I just because I should have like declared the handoff and then gone there and handed off. But I just declared I just like, you know, clicked the guy I was handing off to. So obviously in my head, I'd gone here and handed off to him, so I was already basing the yoga with Mr. Throw. Fuck's sake, that is annoying as fuck. <laughs> diced once again. The most diced man in Blood Bowl. Yeah, Jim's using up his time bank. Chat, behave. I'm going to be back in five minutes because I need to run and get some food.
Alright, I'm back. What's happened? Oh, double tag. Um, shit. Yeah, Cruel, it's looking like it just is the dodge. Unless Jim can find some creative play, but there's no chain pushes on that makes sense. It kind of just has to be the 3+. Problem is that the line Jim is looking at is just not going to make the situation better. Luckily, draws are also okay because there's no OT, if I'm correct. The humans can't score either, because they don't have any turns left. Oh, wait. Nope. I mean, it was a lot more dice. So I think the 3 plus was just better. Because he needs to hit a 30% to try and get the, um, the no 3 plus. Makes it easy. Makes it anyways. Jim's the best blood ball player in the world. Easiest dodge of his life. Exactly magic up. It was just big brain strats from Jim. He just knew there was going to be a bunch of twos in the dice log. Exactly, Torek. He is the most glorious assist. Jim's got eight turns. This should just be a 2-1. Oh, look, it's a blitz. And what did I say earlier about this setup and blitzes? Call Troop can't use it. Uh, J5, the TV show or the games? Because I haven't seen the show. Yet. Yeah, I haven't seen it, so I can't comment on it. Comment on it, sadly. Oh. Um. I think it's cool that they, like, make live-action shows like this. Because it, it, it drives engagement into universes that I really like. Um... But on the other hand, it's like, is it really necessary? It's like, is it is it really necessary to be making live action series of video games like this? Like, how how are you able to drive a story forward outside of the video games like this, other than just for the sake of doing it, right? Still, I think it's personally, I think it's pretty cool that they're doing it because I like having this sort of thing. Failed a rush. Oh, 
to summarize my opinion on the Fallout show. Great idea. Don't know about the execution. Um, also, can we stop making TV shows or video games? It's getting a bit ridiculous now. Like, there are so many other good ideas, I'm sure, there are, that could uh, turn up. The Resident Evil films were really, really bad. I thought they were really bad. <laughs> J5, there's been made seven Resident Evil films? Seven? There's no way there's seven of them. Instant full double power uphill. Jim's a dice lord. Yeah, nah, there's no way the Resident Evil films are that good to warrant making seven of them. How, how on earth do you even make a Resident Evil film that's actually quality? Other than just zombies be shot. Point Helemies. That's a fair point. I, Christopher, I haven't actually ever seen any of the um the um Resident Evil films. That's why I didn't know there were seven of them. If I, that's probably why they made seven of them. Then must have earned so much money from just seeing her naked. Are we even going to bother with the game at this point? Like, this is just classic orc drive. Run down, bang on men's. I mean, Jim's in a decent enough position. Wall is fairly secure. Really isn't much to say about this drive. As long as Jim doesn't roll horrendously this turn, you'll be fine. Exactly, Tuk Tuk. Classic gym drive. Try and get some chat engagement going, shall we? So, 
for the YouTubes as well, how would you approach this drive if you're the humans? It's one all at half time. Orcs are driving. How do you approach the drive? <laughs> Concede. It's a pretty viable strat, isn't it? Green and try to draw, yep. Make Jim lose his last minute of bank and win by default, yep. Also a viable strap magic up. Oh, hello. A pretty big removal, that. Was that a big one as well? No, it was, it was a big one. <laughs> Just say racist shit in game chat. <laughs> Crying is also an option, Keat. Also, hello. I mean, massacring the orcs shouldn't exactly be a strategy for humans. Unless you're up like three men's, in which case it's like, oh, might as well just bang on men's. Orcs can't do anything to me anyways. Nice one, J5. KO is really nice. There's a guard man's as well. Jim doesn't need to advance just yet. He can just stay right where he is. Oh, there's a free surf on here. Never mind, there's not a free surf on here. Diced again. Jim, officially the most diced man in Blood Bowl. playing his defense a lot better than he's been playing his offense so I think if I would have put any like remarkable indicator on where he should improve it should be his offense Nice dodge. To be fair, who doesn't hate playing offense? Certainly, I don't like it. It's also a strat you can employ.
Well, Olga being mashed in is a bit of a problem for Jim, though. Cheeky one in nine. Doesn't matter, was on a block piece. Diced again. Suddenly, Jim's position went from stable to being under a lot of pressure. So I'm interested to see how Jim solves this. Probably a switch to the left with a few pieces. Or to the center, I should say. Yeah, exactly, Halamese. Losing the center is a bit meh. Especially considering that's the one point of contention that the Orcs want to dominate at all times. So yeah, Jim switched over to the center. Stable enough turn. He's got four turns to run it down the pitch and score. If he keeps getting removals at this rate, he's going to be just fine. He can probably even afford to leave something on the Ogre so that it doesn't come back into the game. The same way that Call Troop is trying to base up the Troll. The problem is the Troll is in a much better position than the Ogre is. I looked away for one second and he made that. Okay. Well, Bonehead on the Ogre is pretty damn good for Jim. Okay. Just a stun. Just a stun. We Gucci and fine. We chilling. I'm sure I'm a fan of that blitz though. But again, it's it's one of those cases where where else are you supposed to blitz, right? And now Jim is just going to advance to the left. Easy peasy, lemony squeezy. <clears throat> as long as Jim doesn't want in line anywhere here. He'll be Gucci and fine. I like the idea of blitzing off the troll, or blitzing the troll flu free as well. It means you're not risking a 1 in 9 block for the troll. Pretty, uh, pretty good line from Jim. You don't even need to activate the troll here, to be honest.
So, chat, what have you been up to today? Anything interesting? Yeah, this sh this should just transition into a school for Jim. <laughs> you should have taken a photo of it, J5. I think Ogre for a Biggin is actually a decent enough trade. So I think that's fine to just stand that Biggin up. Do nothing with it. Humans are desperately trying to get back into position. He's got three one in nine or two one in nine dodges to make here. And I think as Jim, you end of turn dodge the Frenzy Blitzer. Now, Jim can just switch into the center, leave the troll exactly where... It, oh, that pow makes it a little trickier to go back into the center. The problem with the center is as well that you bring the ogre back into relevance. Forcing the blitz as well. Fuck me! A one dice that wasn't a pow! <laughs> Unbelievable, it is possible! Holy shit! Yeah, Coltrip has been very lucky on his 1Ds this this game. To be fair. Okay, clears the ball. Eee. Eee. Not exactly what you were hoping for. You've still got three turns though. One turn before you need to move into scoring range. So my guess is you just stabilize exactly where you are. Don't activate the troll. Yeah, it might get sticky, Helamese. Um, But I, I don't think Jim can afford to block with the troll here. He just needs to leave the troll exactly where it is. And just try and shore up the position a little more so that the uphill doesn't just give a free... Uh, doesn't give dice on the ball if you get the knockdown. Ah, uh, even if you get the knockdown, it's pretty bad. Oh, look, a pow on a catcher! It's a KO as well? No, just a stun. Pretty big stun, though. And yeah, like I said, it's just end of turn dodge with the Frenzy Blitzer. Fine. This is fine. With that big and being where it is, you can actually afford to take the hit with the troll. It's just, it's not nice to take it. It's very greedy to do it, so you just don't. You could puke. You could throw in a puke. But I don't think the puke is worth it either. Because the really stupid is, well, really bad. It's more or less the really stupid that I'm looking at and not so much the actual block itself.
I think he might go for the dive here. Just take the five up two against. Or base all the men's. And from Jim is going to be very, very important. For... Oh, look, it's a skull! Oh, it's a pal. Never mind. Yeah, force the troll to do something is probably usually a pretty good plan. Because the troll can one at nine. I mean, obviously the troll can also roll like a god. But the troll can also one at nine or really stupid at a really bad time. Look at 1D that wasn't a pal. I actually really don't know how to approach this matchup as the humans. Other than trying to take control as much space as possible on defense and not look for so much contact. I think it comes down to a few roster decisions. For example, the double blodge catches. It's pretty redundant. That could be more guard. The tackle is pretty redundant without Mighty Blow. Is this, um, this Super League, is it uh, Euroball rules? Okay, so it's Euroball rules, right. Is it with or without the blessings? Because if you can stack, then there's a much better roster on the line here. Control block. Works. Yeah, J5, I can see that. I can see that. It's just... Tackle is... If you're hitting skinks, you should be going for the 55. And not the 75. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so the blessings were active, basically. With that in mind, you skip tackle on the... Um, uh, well, no, you, you keep the tackle on the blitzer, but you stack Mighty Blow. You drop the double blodge catches for more guard on the blitzers. And you drop the block thrower for leader. So you've got three rerolls in leader. You don't really need the sneaky git, you, you have a lot of guard. I mean, Jim's roster is also quite difficult to play against, simply because he's got six bloody guard. This is um This is looking like a two uphill into three plus dodge into two uphill to try and stop the score. Oh this. It's a push. Reroll used. <laughs> it's a pal. Of course it's a pal. I should have put this this blitzer should have been here, right? I just didn't think. I just put him there like automatically instead of thinking. Yeah, but if it was, if it was here, always going to be a pal. Yeah, but if it's it here, it locks it down, right? Then it's like a four yeah. or three, or like it's it's so much harder yeah. to go through. This guy should have been in this square. Yeah, fuck. Fuck, fuckity, fuck, fuck, fuck. 
I'm pretty much di dice to a one one here, by the way. <laughs> he has been so, rolling an insane amount of one Ds. Yeah, I don't, I don't like, feel so bad. He's also been seeking a lot of contact against a team he shouldn't be seeking contact against. Yeah. Which was very, very weird to me. Yeah, that's how he plays, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, four plus four plus, casually, just quietly. <laughs> And you wouldn't think I'd be the one dies when you look at how many players he's been removed. But then, you know, it's just the fucking his touchdown, right? Like, I double one into him making everything to get the score. Do you know what I mean? Otherwise, I'm one yeah. up on his drive. And it's just I, fucking bother. I must admit, I wasn't a fan of that turn where you snaked the rush. Well, yeah, I mean, but 35 times... I, if I don't make the rush, right, he just blitzes him, scatters it, and scores anyway, right? Like, I, I felt I had to have the ball in hand, you know? Like, it's... Just one of them things. Yeah, I mean, he also he also made it a lot more complicated than he needed to, right? <laughs> yeah. Like he traded he traded a two plus two plus uphill block for two three pluses for a two D block. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Failed my serve. Failed my Unless... serve, obviously. <laughs> oh, Unless... is there a chance? Oh, is there... No, 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 going... no, no, that's the wrong. Going way. the wrong way. It's gone the wrong way. Oh, I'm just gonna lose. He's got a turn left. I'm just going to lose. Amazing. He's got the scoring threat. He's got the scoring okay, threat. Okay, yeah, no, okay. F thank fuck for that. I saw the catch. I was like, fuck me. Absolute blind panic sets in. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a scoring threat. You're fine, Jim. Fuck. fuck me. This fucking game, man. Diced into oblivion. Jim, the most diced man of Blood Bowl. Pretty much. I also did uh, the correct thing and uh, plugged the YouTube, trying to uh, gauge some engagement. Oh, glorious, thanks. One, two, three, four, five. Double GFI, pick it up, lob it. I mean, that seems guaranteed to work, doesn't it? It'll work. No, nope, instantly fail the next dice roll. Dice? <sighs> Fuck's sake. No. <laughs> I can't help but feel bad about that. I was so close to just winning 1 0 on his drive. Like, you, were not win yeah. you know what I mean? Winning his drive 1 0. Yeah. And then obviously this game would have been 1 0 then, and that would have been it. But, um, man, every. Every every one D nearly was a. Every, nearly every single one D did was a power. Was what it felt like. In absolutely insane how many one Ds mm. were just pals. Yeah. Now, obviously, they're fifty percent right a lot of the time. He's got a lot of he's got a lot of blockers. He's got like a lot of blitzers, and I've got um, I've got uh, you know, my big ones don't have blocks. So like, it's um, it's maybe not that crazy. Yeah, but if you're if you're flipping a coin fifty times <laughs> and it lands on the same result fifty times, you start to suspect that something might be rigged. Yes, I mean that. Obviously, um, it it felt bad, <laughs> but the thing is, humans are really bad at uh, at knowing things, aren't they? So maybe maybe it wasn't as ludicrous as it seemed, but it sure felt bad. I mean, there were a lot of one D pals, but there was also a lot of one D pushes. Mm. He was just throwing an insane amount of one Ds. Yeah. Yeah, which he didn't have a lot of choice about, right? Because I've got six guard and orcs, and he's got a shitty human team. <laughs> I mean, I pretty much said it. I pretty much said it at the beginning of the game that he made a mistake, turn one on his drive, mm. that basically led to the entire like spiral of problems, which mm. was the one D blitz he made on turn one. Yeah, yeah. That he immediately, was, yeah. he immediately sought contact. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't a fan. I mean, I was a fan of it, but I wasn't a fan of it from his point of view. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, he, he was really under the cosh, wasn't he? But, I mean, I think the biggest mistake he made was on turn zero, which was choosing humans at all, right? Him and him and, <laughs> him and, uh, him and Christopher, I, 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 I felt they both made the biggest mistake of their tournament in the, in the select team phase. Humans, but, you know. humans are fine in this rule set. It's just the way he built his roster that is incorrect. Mm. It's the double blodge catcher and it's the block uh, thrower. That's problematic. Mm. Well, I, I don't know. I, I think they're not very good. Like when you consider like the absolute power that like you know other teams have, 
Um, hmm. it, it's hard, even with the extra skills. Like you know, humans are still humans, right? Like there's you get, other things get a lot. Like there's other teams that are just better, and they still get a lot. So it's not uh, it's not that good. How old call truth? It was it was very close. I mean, you know, I could have obviously I could have just failed one of my scores anyway. Right? I could have just failed my score. I, I did put that guy in the wrong square, which is fucking annoying. I just did it automatically without thinking. So stupid, just positioning him like a screen when I should have looked at where the troll was and then realised I could have put him one down, which would have totally locked that down. So that was like a lazy misposition from me. If I put him in the right square, then it's probably I'd probably score and win, right? Call trip, don't watch the vod. So that's annoying. <laughs> I just complain about the one D pals. <laughs> that, that's all. There was a lot, of, but again, right? It's not your fault, right? You know, obviously, you can't just not block, right? So you have to, you yeah. have to one D basically because I've got six guard and you don't. I've got loads of strength four and you don't. But I would have just liked the one D's blocks to have not been quite as effective, not to have got scored on, you know, on defense, right? Like it, that, that was the big one, the getting scored, and I got, you know, lucky in the end, right? The three plus to score. But I would have liked to have been that one nil up at half time. And if I'm one nil up at half time, then I could be more sensible than everything and then just win 1 0. I wouldn't have cared about trying for the 2 0. Um, I mean, the game would have been over if you were 1 0 up at half time. Yeah, I think so, yeah, because I could have been less less adventurous. Like, I still had to do some crazy moves, didn't I? I mean, not that crazy, but something a bit crazy. Like, I had to think about scoring all the time with a movement 5 guy with a ball, which wasn't ideal. I was very sad to not get my surf after I had the chance of it. I was super sad about that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what can you do, eh? So anyway, the, the tables are updated. There you go. Diamond stands astride the world like a colossus with two wins out of two. Uh, undefeated, which is I am, which is all right, isn't it? Call Troops hasn't lost, so, you know, that helps him. It looks like um, Inarian is inching towards a loss as he has been unresponsive for a week. Um, it's now Thursday today. The deadline is Sunday night. So, yeah, Inarian has been completely unresponsive, so... Not looking great for Inarian right now. You know, hopefully he'll he'll come back and play the rest of the games. Um, but yeah, looking very much like Strider's going to get a win versus Inarian there. Um, so yep, that's that's Group A. And uh, yep, thank you very much, Harger, and the tiny little James Bond there. If you if you noticed, <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome, Jim. Anytime. Thank you very much, and thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.